This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. If you'd like the list of places to buy cool models, skip to right here. There are just a few things I want to go over before we get there. When I was a wee baby miniature painter, all I knew was Games Workshop. GW is fantastic. They make some of the greatest 28 to 32 millimeter miniatures on the market, but they are limited. The models they sculpt are limited to their lore, and also the scale is strictly for wargamers. And before you say, but GW does make large scale models, Scott, they don't actually. There's a difference between a Tree Lord Ancient and the Duchess. The Duchess is a 75 millimeter scale miniature, whereas the Tree Lord Ancient is a 32 millimeter scale. Scale refers to the universe each model exists inside of. In this vampire's world, a 6 foot person is 75 millimeter tall, and in Twig Boy's universe, a 6 foot person is 32 millimeter tall. You might think, so what? A large model is a large model, but scale limits subject. In GW games, a large model will only ever be something monstrous, like a big tree man, a dragon, or a knight. And while a Keeper of Secrets is fairly humanoid, that's all there is. GW makes no large-scale Space Marine or Dark Eldar, it's just subjects that are large in the small world they live in. This is not a knock to GW at all, it's only an observation. Another difference between the big games we know and love, like Age of Sigmar, Star Wars Legion, Malifaux, etc., and these smaller brands is that these large games have a team of sculptors dedicated to achieving their vision in-house. Smaller, boutique brands contract freelance sculptors, and while some brands might contract the same person multiple times, really the only thing tying together each subsequent release is the want of the person hiring the sculptor. Sometimes they're consistent in genre, style, and subject matter, sometimes they're not. All right, let's get on with it then. If you're looking to spread your mini wings with some tasty models, where do you go? While not necessarily an individual web store, Kickstarter has been a fantastic place for smaller brands to get their ideas out there and purchased. Some of these manufacturers don't have a permanent place online to buy their stuff, while some do, so it can be really nice to pick up some limited edition stuff. For instance, I've picked up this awesome Death Knight on Imbrian Arts Kickstarter called Undead Resin Collection Volume 1 back in 2017. Not only is the packaging for this model magical, but the model itself is awesome. The cast on this model is nothing short of gorgeous. I bought this to enter in a crystal brush because he qualified for their single fantasy category while not being too small and also being unique enough such that not everyone had seen him before. Other display models that I've bought on Kickstarter are these cute little 54mm gnomes from Blacksmith Miniatures. On Red Cap specifically, I love the mixture of whimsy and dourness that comes from a subject like a gnome executioner. It's an interesting question to ask. Do gnome cultures have executioners? I suppose if they did, it wouldn't look far off from this. If you're on Kickstarter and you want to know where to look, consider checking out Tabletop Games, Games, or the Sculpture tag. Most of the campaigns seem to be there. Your wallet will either thank me or hate me depending on your marital status. Next up on my list is a bit of a fixture in the miniature painting community. F.E.R. Miniatures, or Fernando Ruiz Miniatures. This Spanish company was founded in 2014 and is the culmination of many companies before it, such as Heroes and Villains, Peter Punk Productions, and more. The owner himself, Fernando Ruiz Chiano, is something of a miniature painting legend. I first heard of him when I was going through his course on the Painting Buddha platform. The company itself has a mixture of all sorts of different models from historical to fantasy to retro sci-fi and a variety of scales such as 75 and 54, but they also have a variety of scales of busts. I have picked up this wonderful bust sculpted by Romain van den Bogiart from the Future Is Now line because it reminded me of Star Trek's communications officer, Uhura. My mom is a huge Star Trek nerd so I wanted to paint this one up for her. I also have Radagundis from the Forged Monkey line, a line dedicated to one specific sculptor, Rafaela Pica. The store has tons of different miniatures. I've had my eye on Manaz and the Red line for a long time, so if you want to buy me a Christmas present, hit a brother up. Next up on the list is Broken Toad, an English company. Broken Toad doesn't have as large a catalog as FER, but what they do have is a fiery devotion to quality. Each of their minis comes with a certificate of authenticity in a plight to fight the recasting of display models. Sometimes, models like these are recast and sold online from other distributors at a lower cost. If you notice that, you should try to avoid these sources and purchase them from the actual maker. Oftentimes, things that are too good to be true are often too good to be true. The model that I have from them is inspired by the concept of the late Guild Ball Rest in Peace. Of course, the only game I have a fully painted squad for goes belly up. Ranting aside, the quality of the cast again is utterly amazing, which is something you're going to find in all of the stores that I recommend in this video. 
Broken Toad's quality isn't only found on their own range, but also on the ranges of Black Sun Miniatures and Robo Rocket Miniatures, two other English brands that have Broken Toad to thank for their extra crispy casts. Broken Toad was also responsible for bringing the IP of Dark Crystal and Labyrinth to life in their recent Kickstarter campaign. And because it's Broken Toad, you know they acquired the IP in a legit way, which cannot be said for some other display model manufacturers. They also are the proliferators of the lauded Broken Toad brushes. They are so committed to quality that these brushes were often very hard to get in 2018 due to a shortage in Kalinsky hair. But not just any Kalinsky hair, the certain kind that they needed for their brushes. It would have been very easy to simply use a different sort of Kalinsky hair, but instead they likely lost on sales due to their commitment to quality, which is something that is very admirable. Again, if you're looking for a little Christmas present for yours truly, a gat is pretty hot. He's one simple conversion away from being an incredibly cool Sith Lord. Before we move on to our next manufacturer, let's hear a word from our sponsor. I don't have a personal gallery for my miniature painting art, so when Squarespace reached out to me to sponsor my video, I took it as an opportunity to use their platform to build a dedicated gallery for myself to show off all the display models that I've at least painted. A gallery like this is useful for a number of reasons. For those who don't know what miniature painting is, which is like all of my relatives, this shows them in a nice, succinct way. Importing images and dealing with alignment is made easy, and all the while creating a website that just looks really nice. It's important that your gallery show your work while also being functional and beautiful itself. If I need to see a bigger resolution of a miniature so I can see the creamy blends, it's as simple as double clicking. If you want to set up a nice miniature art gallery for yourself, head to squarespace.com slash miniac to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain using the code miniac. All right, back to the cool manufacturers. Up next on the list of sexy AF models is the glorious Spira Mirables, which is kind of a fun word to say. Spira is a brand that only sells pre-orders of their awesome concepts, and when they're gone, they're gone forever. This company is the artistic creation of Luca Pina Panache, and his busts are always wonderfully whimsical. In a grim dark world where everything is just sad and violent, sometimes all you want is a cute gnome boy riding on the shoulders of his gnome dad. The model I have from this brand is a Dwarven Miner, and I love it. Certain models just seem like a joy to paint, and this one absolutely does, from the character itself to the wonderful little volumes found all around the model. Apparently, I have a thing for buying busts and not painting them. Yeah, Scott, that's definitely only the case for busts. Follow this guy on Facebook so you can see what the next pre-order is coming up so you can get your hands on one of these wonderful pieces. Because I'm making this a thing, if you're buying presents for random strangers on the internet and you can somehow find the King of Goblins for sale, I'll take that wrapped with a bow tie sent to Minnesota. No need for an actual address, they'll know it's for me. On the list next, we have Black Crow Miniatures. Earlier we looked at FER and they were kind of all over the spectrum in terms of aesthetic and slowly as the video has gone on we've looked at brands that have narrowed their focus and Black Crow is definitely on that path. Focusing mostly on fantasy concepts you can feel the thread that connects all of these models. The one that spoke to me was the Wraith, probably unsurprisingly. Coming in at 90 millimeters tall, this model is the beautiful work of Edgar Ramos. Edgar, call me. We need to have a talk about some concepts that I'd love for you to bring to life. But also, I just want to talk to you because I'm a fanboy. <laughs> Being a fan of fantasy more so than sci-fi, this manufacturer is an A-plus in my book, sporting quality casting, phenomenal sculpts by Raul Garcia La Torre, our buddy Lucas Pina, and more, and awesome concepts. Really, that's kind of all you need to make an awesome miniature company. I'll take one Hlin, please. I'm almost certain I mispronounced that. Moving away from the world of large-scale, expensive figures, we have the Humble Red Box Games, a brand I recently discovered and am growing to love very quickly. Yes, they're pewter. No, you shouldn't be afraid of pewter. It's like someone created a pewter boogeyman that scared all the hobbyists away from it. It really isn't any harder than something like resin to work with, so quit your wine and buy these glorious little halflings. I can see these models being very useful for D&D, but the reason I bought them was because the instant I saw them, I saw a story. I saw a story of a bunch of estranged soldiers guarding a caravan moving through the woods terrified of ambush at night. Really, that's my only metric for buying models. Not that they're estranged soldiers guarding caravans in wooded areas, but that I can instantly see a story. That always informs so much of how I paint, as hokey as that sounds. I describe these concepts as the kind of models you might find in a cool mini or not game, just without the crappy board game plastic you have to deal with. Coming in at 9 bucks a pop, these models are a lovely mixture of character, good sculpting quality, and also not too many details to weigh down the models. I've got my eye on Lord Oswald of Swithing Keep, not only because his name is absolutely glorious, but also because that box art by Oliver Spaeth is just so right for this model. 
Like, if there was ever a brand and an artist pairing that was good for the world, it was this one. So yeah, P.O. Box in the description so you can send me these minis so they can remain unpainted in my hobby closet. Last on our list is the company that I have purchased and not painted the most miniatures from, and that is Terrible Kids Stuff, a name that has confused me forever. TKS is a company that got me a long time ago with their model, The Butcher. When I found it, it was actually sold out, but I reached out to them and Vittorio actually sold me his personal copy. That was such a kind thing to do and something that you only really experience with smaller companies like this. I have some big plans for this model. It gives me fantasy doom vibes, so he's definitely ending up in a hellish diorama of sorts. I also picked up this witch hunter from them because I love the relationship between vampires and witch hunters, and at some point I'll make a sweet dual diorama with this model and a vampire. I also had Winter Soldier at one point, but I gifted it to Vince Venturella, and he painted it instantly. It's kind of like the Cookie Monster, but instead of eating cookies, he just paints minis. Thanks for making me look bad, Vince, but also thank you for putting paint on this very deserving model. Terrible kid stuff doesn't necessarily stick to one theme of model. They're a little more eclectic. One notable entry in their catalog are their models based on the art of Brahm or the Ninja Lady, which to me looks heavily inspired by Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill movies. If you're a mini archaeologist and you somehow find Jack in the Plucker, a very old model from TKS, I'd very happily put that next to my other two unpainted models. Okay, thanks. Bye. All of these companies are awesome, and I've bought stuff from all of them, but if none of these companies tickled your fancy, I'll have a document in the description that lists out all sorts of manufacturers to cover all your bases, like barbarians, sexy sci-fi sisters, and more. In the end, the best way to find out about these smaller niche markets and kind of pop-up makers is to be involved in the community at large. Following people on Facebook and Instagram really puts you in the mix of what's going on in the mini world outside of the big brands we're all familiar with. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you like the shorter spotlight of some of these smaller makers. If you like the channel and you want to support it, I also make display models. And by models, I mean one. I have a 75mm display model called the Duchess, a vampire. And along with it, you can also purchase a digital course that will teach you how to paint the model from beginning to end. The entire course is 4 hours and 38 minutes long and includes a lot of painting that plays back at about 200% speed. It goes over everything from the inspiration of the paint job to the techniques and paints used. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Subscribe or die! But most importantly, don't forget to paint my